system was It's about 90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on her final mission. We're clear now. Okay, good. Now he can't turn around. I know. Oh my God. Fire oh, minus one minute, ten seconds, yes. and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is now at the proper flight pressure. I know he's on a right now. T minus one minute and counting. The ground launch sequencer will verify that the three main engines are ready to start. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 48 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on uh, three onboard fuel cells. Coming up, we're on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy wave.
now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should one of the engines fail, but all three engines continue to perform it as expected. Capcom Charlie Hobart updating the crew there with some uh, updated uh, time information due to the later than planned launch. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Discover you are negative return. Negative return. Discovery now traveling too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. But all three main engines continue to function as expected. The shuttle now traveling 5,200 miles an hour. Its altitude 62 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 170 miles. Four minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 6,200 miles an hour, it's altitude 66 miles, downrange from KSC 229 miles. Here inside Mission Control, Flight Director Richard Jones and his team continue to monitor the progress of Discovery's flight. All systems are continuing to perform as expected.